Hi folks, Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Welcome. If you haven't seen it before, this is the Spruce Colon Timber Mega Mini Layout. Yeah, to put it mildly, it was an extreme departure from what I was modeling at the time. This project reignited my passion for model railroading, and it opened up a whole lot of new friendships along the way. This is not what you'd call a how-to video, but we will discuss the overall process of designing and building the layout. This whole thing started during a family vacation that included a stop at Cass Scenic Railroad in Pocahontas County, West Virginia. We had been to Cass many times before, and I've always been interested in steam locomotives, but I had never modeled anything from the steam era in my 35 years in the hobby. I don't know. Perhaps getting older has made me start to appreciate those days when life was much simpler. Now for the life of me, I can't explain why this trip to Cass was so different, but I came home and immediately started sketching out scenes and ideas that would eventually become the Spruce Cull and Timber Railroad. Without hesitation, I put some of these ideas into action by creating several small dioramas. I wanted to see if I could accurately represent the flavor of the scenery. I was more than happy. As a matter of fact, I was anxious to get started building something to run trains on. I took the simple route and created a portable module. The idea was that this could work like club modules. Each one could have its own specific scene and serve as a photo diorama, so to speak. Well, that worked out great, but I got tired of running trains back and forth. There had to be a way to get off that module and go somewhere. I only had so much room, so I had to be creative. I don't know about creative, but I built an angled module that included a reverse loop. I also incorporated that bridge diorama into the scene. The right hand side was complete and I eventually had to come back to the left side of the existing module. Hmm, I thought, what can I put there? A reverse loop and redo the track on the module to accommodate it? Nah, that didn't sound like much fun, so I decided to give it some thought. As you saw in that illustration, I really had a blank canvas to do anything I wanted. But I did have to give myself some limits to work within to keep myself from going off the deep end. So. I had an idea, and I had a small unused frame that I built for another project. That's it! A self-contained portable layout that could work with the existing module. I immediately whipped up a track plan to fit the bill. Well, <laughs> not immediately. I drew and redrew until I came up with something that was simple enough, yet interesting. While we're at it, we're not going to get into a whole discussion about equipment versus tight curves. As you know, or have seen, there are locomotives in rolling stock that are made to negotiate tight curves. Plus, if I couldn't buy them, I'd make them. Although I already had this frame built, I did rework the stringers so they would not interfere with the switch machines or accessories. More than anything, I'm showing you this construction method should you decide to build your own. I know I show this in a lot of videos, but the Craig Screw construction method allows you to take it apart if you need to make adjustments. Yep, standard household drywall. I've used it on a number of layouts in the past. Nothing against Mr. Plywood, but I was building this thing at a fever pitch and I wanted to keep moving. What do you know, there was a piece of drywall that was almost the exact size. The track is all hand laid, on a budget mind you, and I'm reusing the rail from a bunch of Atlas Code 83 flex track that I had on hand. The ties are from Fast Tracks, handlaidtrack.com up in Canada, and I got them at the same time that I bought the turnout jig. Nothing special here, just two wires connected to two rails. Don't mind that old school coil machine, we're definitely not using that. For quite a while I used the regular toggle switches. Later in the life of the layout I switched over to touch toggles by Baird Hill Trains. I use a solvent based wash to stain the ties, black paint and black thinner. I would guess that most people use commercially available tracks, so that video there demonstrates that method. As I mentioned, there really was no advanced planning involved. Once I had the track laid, it was time to start thinking about the landscape. And I'm really not joking when I say I had no clue where I was going with this. I did refer to some pictures I had of the area I was modeling, and I combined that with my imagination. I knew I couldn't work outwards, so I worked upwards. And it all started to take shape. Ah, uh, we're getting into my favorite part of modeling, and that's the actual scenery. As with all my layouts and dioramas, I use dirt colored paint and real dirt. Be sure to check out those videos. If you like the scenery you saw in the opening clips, keep in mind that those other videos demonstrate exactly how I created the scenery on this layout. Again, in-depth demonstration videos can be found right here on our channel.
Once I had the base scenery moving along, I started to think about the structures. Again, I had absolutely no idea whatsoever what I wanted to do. Sure, I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like, but that's about it. One after the other, I scratch built structures to fit. I'd add one, look at a photo, and then add another, and so on and so on. I knew I wasn't modeling a prototypical scene, so I was more concerned with the flavor and representation. If I didn't like it, I could always change it. To be honest with you, I was building this little thing so fast that I never gave any consideration to the initial idea of having it connect to the module. I made it easy on myself and created this transition piece instead of rearranging track on the left side of the module. And the rest, my friends, was history. Be sure to subscribe, stay tuned, and share the hobby. This is Joey Ricard with TrackSideScenery.com. Thanks for watching. See you next time.